Good afternoon, everyone. And this is the VGG chat with Rob and Monica. How's everyone doing today? We have a special guest with us. Her name is Brandy B. Selecta. And so did I get that right? Yeah, B. Selecta. All right. Yes. Thank you. She is a powerhouse DJ in the California area. And so each Tuesday and Thursday, we told you guys we're going to be bringing the heat with some great people who have really made their mark in history, in the industry. And so without further ado, I'm gonna let my partner in crime, Rob, take over and get this interview started. Is that okay, Brandy, be selecta? Yes, ma'am, let's go. All right. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know about that partner in crime, criminal activity, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> are we. So anyway, I, guys, I'm, I'm so excited today. This is a, a special friend of mine. Brandy Stevens, B. Selecta. She's a bad woman and has a great story. So we're going to dig into it quickly. These uh, these sessions are just to give you a snippet and really uh, get you to understand who these who the, the the artists are, the people that we're bringing in. Normally, we'll bring business folks in on Tuesday, Thursdays are artists. So uh, we're going to allow you to get her social media as well. Uh, reach out to her. But she's doing big things, and um, she just did an amazing conference for us, and uh, it was dope. I, every meeting I go to now, everybody wants, oh, the DJ, the DJ. Oh, she was just, oh, the DJ, the DJ. You got to get the DJ. You know, I'm like, I know. That's super I told cool. you. <laughs> That's so anyway, Brandy, cool. welcome to BGG Chats. Um, Thank you. So yeah, so the first thing is, why don't you uh, give, tell everybody a little bit about, you know, how you got started in this whole DJ thing. So, uh, okay, so we were briefly chatting about that. It was never on my radar. I, I grew up in Canada um, and I did the music thing there. I worked at a record store and then I worked for a radio station and then I worked for BMG Music. And my dream, I thought, was to be an A&R rep for a major record label. Okay. So um, I, the Canadian music scene is great, but it's a little bit indie like sometimes. And I thought, okay, A, I'm tired of being cold, like very much tired of being cold. And so I thought I gotta, I gotta go somewhere where it's bigger. So it was like New York or LA and I didn't wanna be cold. So New York was out, even though I miss New York cause goodness gracious, New York is cool. So I, I drove my little Honda Civic to LA and I ended up getting a job for an entertainment attorney he basically asked me if I understood music. I said, I don't have any legal background, but he right. said, but do you understand music? Do you understand producing? Do you understand what a mechanical royalty is? And I did, I knew that because I had read a book called All About the Music Business. It's like the Bible for music industry people, All About the Music Business by Donald Passman. And uh, so anyway, he took me under his wing and he taught me the law uh, surrounding negotiating entertainment contracts for musicians. So I ended up working, doing that. And that's actually right. what the record is for. You and I kind of spoke about that briefly. I ended up negotiating half of the You Got Served soundtrack and Omarion's entire solo album. So in the inlay there where it says legal representation is my name, yeah. which is crazy because yeah. I didn't go to school for law. I did not. So I got my Esquire for free. Which was so, <laughs> but hey, however, that, that right? I saved a lot of money. Um, yeah. But in in that process, in working for that entertainment attorney, and specifically this album, put me right in front of the VP of Sony's A and R department. So I was literally sitting in front of my dream job, and I looked around in the office and I saw stacks of of, of CDs because we were still listening to CDs, and right. um. I talked to him for a while and I saw with his life that he's half the time in New York, half the time in LA, uh, very, very dedicated to his job, but lived for his job. And I knew that I wanted to be a mom one day and have a family. That was the other dream I had. And I realized that day, I was 22 years old. I'll never forget it. I walked out of Sony Records and I just thought, wow, everything I've been working for since I was 16 is done. I don't, I don't wow. want to do this. This is not for me. And I was so lost after that because it had been such a goal. And, um, but I knew I couldn't have both. I knew I couldn't be successful a &R and a mother at the same time. And I wasn't willing to give up the family aspect of life. 
So I was lost for a long time. And my daughter was two years old. I did random jobs. I tried to go back into radio sales. That was not my jam. Corporate was not my jam. Um, right. So I was pretty lost. But uh, when my daughter was two, I was sitting outside and I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. I know I need something other than just mom though. Like mom right. is great, but I need Brandy too. And I call it whatever you want. But this idea of being a DJ came into my head. And it, 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 it's a bit of a backstory about why that came into my head, but we don't have time for that. But it came into my head. So I started We'll have you come back for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started yeah. researching the history of, of the art of DJing. And that got me into the history of hip hop culture. And I fell in love with all of that and, and beyond hip hop culture, reggae in Jamaica in the 50s is, is where, that's why I'm B Selecta because back in the 50s, the DJs were called the music selectors because they picked the music right. that were played on the streets. And that's why in a lot of reggae music, you hear rewind selecta because they're not DJs, they're selectors. And I'm definitely a selector. That's my jam is it's all about the, the music yeah. that I choose. Yes. So uh, I started a journey. I researched it for like six months, called a homie that was a great DJ and said, would you teach me? And he said, only if you're serious. I'm not going to waste my time. I said, no, I'm, I'm serious. I, I've, been doing, I've been doing research. I want to do this. So it was my 29th birthday. He brought his turntables into my garage. I mixed I Just Want to Love You into I Just Want to Love You by Jay-Z. Yo, still love the dude. And um, right. I was hooked. Exactly. That was it. That was it. I spent eight hours in my garage that night and uh, I, I fell in love. And what was awesome about it, this is what is so like, oh, if you don't believe in something bigger. Um, the reason I wanted to be an A&R is because I love music and I love to share music with people. And I thought that I had a good ear for good music. So that's what led me to A&R. What's awesome about the DJ experience is that that's exactly what I do. That is right. all I do is share great music with people in a way that takes them on a journey, right? Um, Absolutely. But I'm my own boss. So all the politics of the industry, I don't have to deal with. I get to choose my schedule. So I got to be the mom role I really wanted and I still got to do my dreams of sharing music with people. It just came in a package I wasn't I wasn't understanding at the time. So that's how it started. Wow. Well, that's cool. That's, that's, that's man, the story is just crazy. You know, every time when we do a live with you, I'm always looking at the record. I'm glad I finally got that today. Man, that's dope, really. Thank and, you. and the people that you've gotten a chance to work with and the big labels and all the other, you know, stuff, because we have a lot of people that we work with now and that's the dream for them. A lot of them want to be able to, to get there and then we're trying to really help them make sure they don't make, make mistakes along the way. Cause you know, everybody wants to get paid, but if you get paid up front and hey, the, hey, the royalties, guess what? You're going to get that much. So, oh yeah, the, that's crazy. That whole yeah. situation was, I mean, I don't know what it looks like now cause the world is different than it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago, whenever that was, but yeah, it is. Um, but I mean, I started making next to nothing um, but you just, I trusted the process. I, my passion for music outweighed everything else. Um, yes. And and I just followed every opportunity that came my way. My promise to myself was I was never going to say no to a gig um, unless it went against some kind of moral situation. But I was never, because I, I get nervous. I'm like, I'm not ready for that. And I said, no, you got to say yes to everything that comes your way. My first gig was Pedal Spin Studio. Is that right? right? It was DJ. <laughs> I yeah, remember. That was my yeah. Memory. First gig was Pedal Spin Studio for a spin class. My second gig was a six-year-old's birthday party at Bar Bar Barboni's Pizza Palace. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> right? But yeah. now, I mean, I have worked with companies I never dreamed of. I've flown, I'm flying to Spain to DJ this year. I've been to Bulgaria to DJ. I've, I've worked with L'Oreal Professional and Mac Cosmetics and the Marriott. And I mean, I, I couldn't have dreamed how this played out for me. I couldn't have made it up in my own head. I just trusted the process right. and followed my passion. You know, they, what you said right there is important. Trust the process, because we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are listening right now 
and we'll be seeing this over, you know, over the next few days. But the process, you know, it, the struggle is real, but the process, you just have to believe in the process. Yeah, and I, I say this important. to people all the time. Just, yeah, you know, the process matters. I had to go through those different gigs and that process of making right. $25 an hour, $50 an hour to get to where I am. So if I was hyper-focused on what I should be making or what I wanted to be doing, instead of just being open to the way that it was going to unfold naturally for me, I probably would have stopped it. I probably would have stopped it. So wow. yeah, trust the process. Brandy, I have a question. So if you could tell any um, DJ out there that's um, wanting to start their career um, mm -hmm. as a DJ, what would you tell them to focus on first? Because Music. a lot of them, like you said, focus on the money, how much money I can get. And that basically cuts them right out of a gig because, or they think that, oh, I'm better than that. I'm above that. But what would you, what kind of advice would you give to them? Because I think a lot of um, young DJs out there need to understand the why behind what you're doing. And it's like, reminds me of this movie called Brown Sugar. I used to love hip hop. Mm -hmm. That's what Samai Lathan said. And so we got to love that music and, and, and do it for the right reasons, you know, the passion behind it. So I just want to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's 100% right, Monica. I spent a year in my garage learning the basics of mixing. Um, what I was really fortunate that my, the guy that decided to mentor me, he's, a, he's the world famous NIC, um, he, he understands the foundations and like the the importance of learning the foundations. DJing is not as easy as people think. It is not just about picking songs and playing them. There is so much more that goes into it. So you have to start with working on your skill set. Learn why. Uh, the Get Down on Netflix is a great story about how it started in the Bronx when it came from, from Jamaica. And it really gave me so much respect um, for the culture of hip hop. It's like, if you're going to represent the culture of hip hop, which I mean, I, if I'm an R&B and hip hop DJ, then I'm trying to represent the culture of hip hop. Then you need right. to understand where it came from. You need to understand, you know, how it, it, it turned into what it was so that you understand the art of being a DJ and then work on that craft work on that craft. You can take gigs. You don't have to be a perfect DJ to take random gigs here and there because you'll learn on the go. But if you don't have that skill set out the gate, if you haven't put in the work, the hours it takes to just get blends, understand that when you get out into the world, the next level is taking what you've learned about blending music. And now you got to connect with people and be able to look at a group of a, a room of people and, and pick songs that you, you think they're going to like without being able to speak to them at all. That's harder than almost anything else uh, is to find their flow. Um, so, so much goes into it that you really do have to start with the basics, start right. with the basics, learn where it came from and learn how to mix records um, for sure. And Love then, that. and then you can start, then you can go out into the community and work on the rest. Love that. Well, let's take one. Yeah. So the, the, so the final uh, parting shot today is Tell us what, what, what's going on next. What's the next big thing? Again, you did, did, did us a solid. She just, uh, we had a, uh, a local event. Uh, it was online, the first annual Black Entrepreneurs Conference in, in uh, Riverside, and she crushed it. Did us Thank a solid, you. came in for little or nothing, led with her heart, and man, she was the talk of the town. So, Thank but- you. You have several, I'm sure you have several other projects. I love what you told me about the L'Oreal, but what, what's next? What do you see for 2021 uh, and 2022? You got something big on the board you're working on? Yeah, I mean, I don't have it all packaged, right? Obviously virtual has become a part mm -hmm. of my life now. So that's been a learning curve, but in that it has opened me to the global DJ community. So I've met right. more DJs than I ever did. I, I was a mom and I did my gigs. I had zero DJ friends like I never got to have conversations with other DJs so the whole pandemic and this virtual world twitch um, has uh, introduced me to the DJ community and the DJ community to me so in that has come 
other opportunities. So um, like coming up on April 6th on Tuesday, I'm doing a one hour panel with a Canadian company. Uh, I'm so excited to go back to my hometown. Um, excited, so, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm excited, eh? For sure. Um, so I'm going to do a one hour panel with them and a two hour set virtually. So I'm doing more online. So you guys can definitely check me out on Twitch. I do sets online. Um, I have, like I said, I have a gig in Spain coming up in September. But the beautiful part about this movement now that I've kind of done it for a while, my heart has always been in people, in community, and connecting with people. And I want to do my, my part in helping this world okay. become a better place. And I never knew how that would work with music. I never, and I still don't have it entirely figured out, but my focus has shifted to that. So like supporting community initiatives like you guys did with the Black Entrepreneurs Conference, supporting local organizations with this female maker market that's happening locally. I DJ for that. I'm reaching out to people who are doing things in our community that I think matter, like One Love IE, so dope. Um, there's another uh, company that's planting gardens in, in San Bernardino. I want to reach out to them and see how I can help because everybody needs music. Music right. helps everything get feel great. Um, and then I want to throw, you know, I want to start encouraging more events that are wellness oriented to try and get people to do that work, to go inside and do that deeper work where I think a lot of a lot of the trauma is sitting and hopefully we can get more people to be more mindful, um, then they can start having these important conversations and we can start moving in the right direction and change what's going on in the narrative currently. So I really wanna take whatever I've built with music and now shift it into what I hope my purpose is, which is really trying to help heal the place. This, this place. Oh, that's awesome. Well, well uh, give us uh, a shout out on all your so social media so everybody can understand how to get a hold of you and book some of your time and send you some money and uh, and <laughs> some love, right? So uh, absolutely, pay yeah, a few bills, right? Yeah, well, yeah. I, I again, <laughs> I, when, when my heart is, I know the money comes, right? Like it, it is. Right. I've been so blessed. Um, so I'm DJ B Selecta on all the Instagram platforms, Instagram, Facebook social media, um, Spotify. I've got playlists on Spotify. I've got <laughs> mixes on SoundCloud. So all you got to do is search DJ B Selecta. Twitch is um, a great place to get a hold of me uh, if you want to watch me DJ live. So it's twitch.tv slash B Selecta. But if that's too much, just hit me on IG because I communicate everything through IG and that's DJ B Selecta. Okay. All right, good. What an amazing story. Thank you so much, DJ B. Thank Selected. you for having have, me. Yes, I have learned so much, and I'm pretty sure that our listening audience has learned as much as they not even expected today because people typically think of a DJ as just a DJ, but you do so much more than that. And so we would, again, just like to thank you, and I'm going to have Rob to go ahead and close us out. Thanks, All Mike. Right. It's okay. been a pleasure. All right, everyone, we appreciate Ms. Brandy Stevens, DJ B Selected for joining us today and share this with your friends, share this with your people out there. Uh, she is just uh, amazing and she has never turned me down for anything. The times where she pack up her gear and come in the 100 degree heat and, and just rock us out. I mean, so please, if you need a DJ, if you need a good quality a talented person with a great heart, she can carry the show. You don't have to do anything. Just talk to her, tell her what you want, and she'll get it done. So everybody, reach out to Brandy, and thank you so much. Be selective. This is BGG you, Chats. All right, we're out. Talk to you. Thank you. Peace.